Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to our closing luncheon of Pass Forward 2018. Every year, Pass Forward is a highlight for preservationists, and this 2018 conference has been extraordinary. Thanks to each and every one of you for attending this week and for everything that you've contributed to make this a successful conference. With that in mind, I want to especially recognize Susan West Montgomery, our Vice President for Preservation Resources. <laughs> Susan and her staff have worked many months to make this conference possible, and then many hours here on site to ensure that the planning is implemented without a hitch. I see their work every day and I want you to know how much they give because they want you, our on-site conference attendees, as well as those who are uh, watching through our online streaming service, to have a memorable experience. So I'd like to recognize, in addition to Susan, Fareen Salahuddin, Rhonda Sincavage, and would you stand up when I call your name, please? Uh, Colleen Dans, Allison Yu, Nikki Van, Lizzie Berenger, and Priya Chaya. Thanks to each and every one of you. I also want to recognize our presenting partners this year, American Express, the Richard H. Driehaus Foundation, and San Francisco Planning. Thanks for making this conference such a success. And we're also grateful for the support and participation of Mike Bueller and San Francisco Heritage, as well as Kara Newport and the staff and board at our National Trust site, Filoli. Preservation really is all about partnerships, and those two partners really made a special effort this year. So let's thank them. I also want to recognize and thank our fascinating Trust Live presenters this year. Victoria Herman, who led us in an important conversation about resiliency in the face of accelerating climate change. Terry Tempest Williams, who so eloquently distilled the many strands that connect natural and cultural conservation. And just this morning, Milton Chan, who through his insights on education helped articulate another exciting frontier in our work, all the ways that saving intangible heritage can and should be an integral part of preservation. It's been a conference to remember, and I feel privileged to have been here with you, engaged in this important work on behalf of our nation and our communities. But we're not finished yet. We still have some of our most important awards to give out today. And this luncheon is where we recognize two individuals at very different stages in their preservation career a colleague who is early in her preservation journey and is already making a mark, and then preservation's highest honor for a lifetime of achievement in the field. To begin these presentations, I want to invite to the stage my good friend and longtime partner and supporter of the National Trust, Tim McClyman, president of the American Express Foundation. Now, Tim and I began work on what has become our longest running and most important corporate partnership back in 2005, and over the years, Amex has been absolutely instrumental in our work to save America's treasured and historic places. American Express is committed to building leadership at the National Trust, most recently supporting a cohort of six of our colleagues at their extraordinary Leadership Academy. They are a founding, presenting partner of our National Treasures campaigns and have worked with us on a number of other initiatives, including Save America's Treasures, the Pass Forward Conference, and the Signature Partners in Preservation Program, which has brought more than $22 million to preservation projects all across the country. Tim has been a great partner to Stephanie and to me over the years. Thank you so much, Tim, for all your hard work and leadership. And to present this year's Aspire Award, another partnership between Amex and the National Trust, to an emerging preservation star, please welcome Tim McClyman.
Okay, thank you so much, David, for that kind introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before I get down to uh, the business at hand, I wanted to say a few words about Stephanie. Uh, I think that uh, I can speak for everyone here in this room and the preservation community at large when I say that having you at the helm of the National Trust has been critical at advancing the cause of preservation and bringing the issue home to new communities. You've reinforced the importance of preserving sites that reflect Americans' full, diverse history, and you've raised record-breaking amounts of money for both the trust and the cause as well, so I congratulate you on that. Since we began working together, yes. Okay. Since we began working together, uh, we've launched a number of partners in preservation programs, as David mentioned, in places like Minneapolis, St. Paul, New York, and Washington, D.C. We've also supported our national parks, and we've focused on historic sites along our main streets uh, in this country. Together, we've engaged hundreds of thousands of people in voting, visiting, and supporting historic places at the heart of their communities. Preservationists are known to be passionate and persuasive, and you, Stephanie, have harnessed both of those talents to drive change in the movement. I admire how you've put people at the center of the preservation movement, a movement that hears, understands, and honors the full spectrum of the ever-evolving American story, a movement that creates and nurtures more equitable, healthy, and resilient communities, and one that collaborates with partners to address fundamental social issues to make the world a better place. That's a legacy that we can all carry with us as we chart a course for the future of preservation. So Stephanie, thank you, thank you, thank you from all of us. Okay, so now as David mentioned, um, I'd like to present a preservationist who is igniting a passion for the movement among young people, Sarah Marsum, our 2018 American Express Aspire Award winner. You can applaud if uh, those of you that... <laughs> the Aspire Award recognizes the significant achievements of an emerging leader in preservation who has shown great potential to influence the future of the preservation movement. Through her work with young preservationist organizations and her founding of the Tiny Activist Project, Sarah has opened the preservation field to new voices across all spectrums. Please join me in watching this brief video honoring her efforts. Heritage resource consultant Sarah Marsum has been a leading advocate and model for emerging historic preservation professionals since 2014, when she became the founding president of the Young Ohio Preservationists. In 2016, the organization launched its first Emerging Professional Scholarship, which funds travel and registration for two to the annual Heritage Ohio Conference. To strengthen connectivity among other emerging preservationist organizations and broaden their reach, Marsum helped launch the Rust Belt Coalition of Young Preservationists. The collective organizes events called Rust Belt Takeovers, which have taken place in cities such as Rochester, Cincinnati, and Buffalo. The takeovers feature free tours and social gatherings. They provide education and share preservation strategies among those working to preserve Rust Belt cities. Of all her contributions to the historic preservation field, however, Marsum is perhaps best known for the Tiny Activist Project. The project seeks to highlight lesser known stories of people who fought to save cultural resources. Marsum holds workshops and sells hand-sewn Jane Jacobs dolls. For the second year, Proceeds from the sales made possible Tiny Jane scholarships to Passed Forward. The Tiny Activist Project works to engage diverse age groups on the subjects of urbanism, heritage, and community activism. 
Marsum continues to keep inclusivity and accessibility at the forefront of her work with her creative approach to storytelling and her commitment to expanding the voices within the preservation field. So American Express is proud to back emerging leaders like Sarah who are pushing preservation forward through innovative strategies and initiatives. So please uh, join me in welcoming Sarah to the stage. She's here already. Okay. Hey, congratulations once again, Sarah, really terrific. I love that tiny activist project. So Sarah has correctly identified that the preservation movement needs to innovate to survive and thrive. As we look to the future of the movement, we look to our young people, millennials and Generation Zers. I think it's clear to everyone in this room that we need new ways of engaging these generations in preservation. We know that the concept of historic preservation is embraced by a diverse cross-section of the population, including millennials. For example, a recent survey that the National Trust and American Express conducted showed that a whopping 97% of millennials appreciate the value of historic preservation. Yet, mention the words historic preservation in a room full of young people, not this one, um, and you're likely to see them either scratching their heads or rolling their eyes, which is what my daughter does. <laughs> Millennials are clearly connected with social causes, so why isn't preservation near the top of their list? I think it's because the historic preservation movement is still struggling to connect a concern for places with a commitment to the kinds of issues that Millennials and Generation Zers care about. Millennials and Zers are an incredibly diverse group, and Generation Z will be the first generation in the nation's history in which people of color are the majority of the population. The way to connect these diverse generations with their preservation, preservation is to highlight their history, the story of their diversity. This is an insight that American Express and the National Trust utilize for our Partners in Preservation Main Streets program this year. As you know, and as David mentioned, uh, the crown jewel of our relationship with the National Trust over the last 12 years has been the Partners in Preservation program. Um, and this is a program that, as you know, is a public engagement campaign that invites community members to vote for historic sites to receive preservation funding, ensuring their continued vitality and relevancy. This October, we celebrated Partners in Preservation Main Streets with 20 sites that celebrate diversity and reflect our nation's struggle for equality. From the lunch counters of the Greensboro sit-ins to the Ellis Island of the South in Miami, these sites that were featured in the campaign vied for $2 million in preservation grant funding which was decided by a popular vote on National Geographic's platform. Over a five-week period, we garnered more than a million votes and 400 news articles and broadcast mentions about the campaign across the country. The ca this campaign, I think, proved again that public enthusiasm is there for historic preservation, especially for sites that reflect the conversation that we are having today about diversity and inclusion. That, that commitment is alive and well and thriving. So one of the elements of the campaign uh, this year was working with influencers, young influencers, like Allie Brook, who is a Mexican-American singer formerly of Fifth Harmony, for you young people in the audience. She connected with her story, the sh story of the Chicano movement, through a visit to the Church of the Epiphany in Los Angeles. This is a place where Cesar Chavez gave talks at the church, and the newspaper La Raza was also printed in the church's basement. 
So we also worked with a large group of diverse photographers with large Instagram followings who visited our Partners in Preservation sites and relived the history and the stories of things that happened there. Both American Express and the Trust are commi committed to building on these themes of diversity and equality and reaching young preservationists as we look to the future of the Partners in Preservation program. So now I'd also like to take a moment to recognize that we are in an historically diverse and culturally rich city, one that has benefited from an influx of many groups of people from all over the world and has been at the forefront of many social movements. This is also a city with a strong commitment to preservation as a way to drive urban renewal and one where the Trust and American Express have supported many historic sites. Our work here continues today. So this week we announced that we're making $450,000 in preservation grants to three sites here in San Francisco. These include the Doolin Larson Building in Haight-Ashbury, the Neo Amachi Little Friends in Japan Town, and the Roxy Theater in the Mission District. So these three beautiful sites really reflect the unique cultural heritage of the Bay Area. And I should also mention, just as an aside, that we've also last week made a commitment to the American Red Cross uh, to help with disaster relief services, including the wildfires here uh, in California. So both, interestingly, uh, both the Nihomachi Little Friends and the Roxy Theater participated in our first Partners in Preservation program 12 years ago here in San Francisco, and two of them received, and both of them received grants uh, through that program. So it's immensely gratifying for me to be part of this virtual cycle that is preservation. Uh, not only do we help preserve the stories of the past, but through saving these unique places, we also have pr help protect spaces for communities to gather and reflect on the future. So thank you all for being part of the preservation movement. Now I'd like to welcome Stephanie Meeks to the stage. Stephanie. Tim, thank you so much for American Express's longtime support of preservation and the National Trust and for the exciting news about those three new gifts. It's really, um, really extraordinary. So please join me in thanking Tim. The National uh, Preservation Conference Pass Forward is always a highlight of the Trust's year. And I just want to say, of the nine conferences that I've been to, I think this is the very best one. And I'd just like to thank our conference team and David Brown for his leadership in putting together such a wonderful and stimulating and thought-provoking program. Thank you. Now we turn our attention to the presentation of the Louise DuPont Crown and Shield Award. This award is given annually to an individual for superlative accomplishment over a lifetime in preservation. And before I present uh, the award to this year's winner, I'd like to take a moment to remember three former Crown and Shield winners whom we've lost this past year. Bill Murtaugh uh, won the award in 1980, and he was a true preservation pioneer. His scholarship and writings helped inform the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. And he was the first keeper of the National Register, a role that he held for 13 years, um, you know, laying the groundwork for creating the list of America's most cherished places. John Bryan received the Crown and Shield Award in 2014 when we were all together in Savannah. John was a champion in business and in community and in preservation, and he saw preservation as a tool for community building. John was a hands-on preservationist, and his 
hands-on and a dedication really led to the protection of places like the Chicago Lyric Opera House and Orchestra Hall, as well as Mies van der Rohe's Farnsworth House, which is a National Trust historic site. And in 2015, we presented the Crown and Shield Award to Robert Silman, who dem really demonstrated exemplary innov innovations in historic preservation through technology and engineering that have contributed significantly to the way we think about preserving buildings over time. So I speak for all of us when I say that we feel their loss and have been and deeply saddened by the passing of Bill and John and Bob, all of whom have left an indelible mark on the preservation community and our work. Now we have an opportunity to recognize an individual who, like these three great giants, exemplifies all that the Crown and Shield Award intends to honor. And that's Jay Turnbull, principal at Page and Turnbull. For more than 50 years, Jay has worked as an architect and urban designer who has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to preservation. Throughout his long career, he has been involved in almost every important historic renovation project uh, here in the city, and we have been fortunate this week to, to see his work and handiwork um, in many of the places we visited, including the Ferry Building and the Palace of Fine Arts, to name just two of them. So through this award, we thank Jay today for his dedication and direct impact on so many important historic landscapes, buildings, neighborhoods, and cities throughout our entire country. And I invite you now to watch a short video summarizing Jay's many accomplishments. For five decades, architect and urban designer Jay Turnbull has used his expertise in preservation and land development to implement pivotal preservation campaigns across the country, and especially in his hometown, San Francisco. Turnbull gained early experience at Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, as well as in the New York City Office of Midtown Planning and Development. In 1974, he became the first staff architect at San Francisco Heritage, where he met Charles Hall Page. The two went on to develop the world-leading preservation and architecture firm, Page & Turnbull, which has found creative strategies to give old buildings new life for more than 40 years. Among the firm's many achievements is Splendid Survivors, a historic resource survey that documented the history, significance, and relative value of several hundred of San Francisco's most notable buildings. This influential book was critical in the development of San Francisco's new downtown plan in 1985, which established revolutionary zoning laws that continue to protect the city's historic structures today. As former staff member and later president of the Board of San Francisco Heritage, Jay has touched nearly every important historic renovation project in San Francisco. Through Page and Turnbull, he helped turn the San Francisco Ferry Building into a bustling marketplace, office space, and public gathering spot. While chair of the Maybeck Foundation, Turnbull was instrumental in launching a $21 million program to rehabilitate the rotunda of the Palace of Fine Arts and its park following damage from the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. Turnbull's thoughtful approach to preservation and adaptive use has earned him numerous state and national honors. He has been named a fellow of the American Institute of Architects, been a peer reviewer for the U.S. General Services Administration's Design Excellence Program, served as visiting critic at Yale University and the University of California, Berkeley, and was honored by the California Preservation Foundation. Through Page and Turnbull, Jay has also been involved in urban planning and landmark conservation projects spanning from Anchorage, Alaska to Charleston, South Carolina to the Grand Canyon. 
Turnbull's many successes exemplify his unwavering commitment to preservation, which has made a direct impact on hundreds of buildings, national parks, government agencies, heritage neighborhoods, and entire cities across the country. It's, it's my great pleasure and honor to present the 2018 Louise DuPont Crown and Shield Award to Jay Turnbull. Well, what an introduction. <laughs> First of all, many thanks to Stephanie and to the trustees. I'm just overwhelmed. I can't believe this honor has come to me. The award is really for all who made the buildings and spaces, our landscape, my friends and I, and the world of preservation have had a chance to conserve. Thanks go to my wife, Anne, and to my sons, Gordon and Davis and to successive directors and staff at San Francisco Heritage from the 1970s forward, including Mike Bueller, president of Heritage today, and to my partners, Charles Page, well known to the National Trust, and Tom and Ruth, Carolyn, John, Lada, and Peter. Really, thanks to all, the whole Page and Turnbull team. In the 1950s and 60s, those vanished days, there weren't many preservation programs available in the School of Architecture. At least, I wasn't in one. But I had mentors and professors who told me things that I never forgot. One such person, Jack Robertson, who was my bo boss for a while, said, old or new, everything is design. It's all architecture, whether you're designing a spoon or a city. If you're working on old buildings, it's mostly individual spoons that you're polishing, but it's always fun. When we speak of preservation today, we're really talking of community and continuity. A thought strikes us. Wasn't it in this room that I heard something true? Wasn't it on that street that I understood something about the heart of this city? We have these thoughts, and when enough people have them, we start to honor or set aside or simply keep what we remember and we revere. These days, I'm thinking about preservations at a cro crossroad. What isn't at a crossroads this time of change? I seem to be hitting more things that are about what this concept isn't than what it is. Historic preservation doesn't necessarily arise out of privilege although it has. The houses of early presidents are certainly sacred places within our society and worthy of being set aside, even though the forces that built them may have been flawed. The idea doesn't arise out of exclusion, although it can. The country's first prisons, some of which are great buildings, were known as penitentiaries. The operative idea was to put people aside so that they could be penitent and emerge as better persons. There are many examples of exclusion today, not necessarily allied with memorable monuments and not benign. Preservation doesn't arrive out of social conflict, although remembered conflict can produce eloquent memorials. In August of this year, for example, the roots of the 1970s protest marches in Southern California have recently been listed by the California Historic Resources Commission. But what historic preservation is, or what it can be, especially if it retains value in an age of conflict, that seems to come from the bonds we have with each other. Defining our field, or our cause beyond that, will involve many, making sense of many a question. What we need most to do is integrate our work with the shared task 
of rebuilding our environment. Here are some dilemmas I've encountered so far. We're being inundated in recent antiques. The explosion of building after the close of World War II is the cause of this, and we need to just choose well what and how we keep. We need to use preservation standards, but creatively. Honoring historic resources is too often used as an excuse to avoid addressing hard needs, particularly the pressure of housing shortages. We're too wedded to process, and we aren't facing the dire problems of the natural world, climate, sea level rise, and the need for sustainability. If these are the challenges, what can we do to make things right? In our office, we try to weave well-designed new fabric into existing districts, to work to create or adopt more eff effective regional planning, to expand advocacy, to answer environmental challenges, to streamline process, and design in an orderly, humane, and thoughtful way. A voice from another time said that the right adjectives were masterly, correct, and magnificent. Finally, we try to practice without can't, and using that word, I mean with and without the apostrophe. In fact, maybe our slogan going forward might be, no can't, by which I mean there is nothing that we cannot do. Well, again, thanks to all of you. I really can't believe this honor. Jay, thank you so much for those words. There's so much wisdom in those, in those few sentences, and uh, I think we'll all reflect on those for some time. Uh, an honor well deserved, and we are delighted to be able to recognize your contributions over decades to the preservation field, so thank you. I also want to thank everyone in this room for what you've done over the past week to make Pass Forward 2018 a success. But even as we bid farewell to San Francisco, the hard work continues, as Jay just said. I hope that as all of you leave this remarkable city, you've come away from this year's Pass Forward with new ideas, new things to develop, new innovations to try, new avenues to pursue, and new friends to work alongside. And that next year, everyone here will all come together again with new stories to tell for Pass Forward 2019 in another of America's great cities, Denver, Colorado. In fact, we can hear it from the, from the Mountains Plains region now. Uh, in fact, next year's conference is only 11 months away. Uh, it will be in Denver, October 10th through the 12th, 2019. And in a change from recent years, that's a Thursday through a Saturday, so make your, make your plans accordingly. Our conference call for ideas is already up and running on the Pass Forward website. We also invite your nominations for the 2019 Richard H. Driehaus Foundation National Preservation Awards and the 2019 Louise DuPont Crown and Shield Award. Please see the flyer on your table, take that with you, and get your ideas in early and often. So thanks again, everyone, and keep up the great work. Remember that in life, we shine a light on the past to live more abundantly today. Keep making a difference. Thank you.